Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another video on Salesforce Bolt. Guys, in this video, I'll show you how you can create a generic error handling framework for a Lightning Web Components. In this video, we are going to create a common Lightning Web Component, which is going to act as an error display component for all your parent components. If you're following my channel, so in my previous video, I talked about there should be a framework, uh, no matter what language you're using. So continuing the same, I'll be creating a generic framework for Lightning Web Component and in further videos, we'll be extending that framework to cover Apex, Batch and Flow as well. So let's start today's video guys. I'm Kapil, your host and you're watching Salesforce Bolt. Right. Let me start this video by giving you a quick demo of the overall functionality that I have built so far. So this is a lightning web component where I'm having my child lightning web component, which is supposed to display the error. And as of now, I have just displayed the error on the click of this triggered error button. So once I click here, it is going to show me a message here. And if I click on show details, it is going to give me the detailed stack trace of it. And also as we have created a custom object and I have created a custom tab for it. So I can simply go here on my error lock tab. And here it is going to load details about all the errors. So this is our latest error where user can simply go and find the useful information that is needed to solve this error. So that's how it is going to be guys. So I will start with the custom object guys that I have created for this functionality. So let me quickly go to object manager because you need to trace these errors. You need to log it somewhere. So I will do error log. So this is a custom object I have created for this demo. It may not be following the best practices related to security. Okay. So this component is having a couple of fields here, uh, which are very, very important to track the errors. So we are having error message here, which is going to be a long text area, which will be capturing a detailed error message. This is our auto number, error record number, last modified by method name. Uh, so in case if we are going to target Apex, we'll be able to fetch method names as well. But for this video, I'll be just focusing on Lightning Web Component. Related record ID, again, this can be very, very useful if you're triggering something from a specific record, you will be able to provide the related specific record ID. Severity of that error, so I have added few values here. If you see here, so I have added low, medium, high, critical, and most of these fields are mandatory. So whenever you're creating a record, you need to make sure that you're populating the values here. Source name, the source of the error, whether it is Apex, LWC, flow or a batch class maybe who knows and source type again this is a pick list value which is having apex lwc flow batch so as part of this overall framework i am uh, targeting to uh, fetch errors from these four different metadata types okay and let me see if i miss anything okay there's a stack trace as well again a long text area field because the stack trace may contain a lot of information all right so this was the custom object that I have created, guys. Now let me quickly move to the Apex class first. Okay, so if you will see the Apex, there are multiple methods I have created. So this first one, if you will see, this is for Lightning Web Components. The method is lock client error, where I'm expecting parameters about component name, method name, message, and stack details, and I'm calling this log error here with all these details okay there's another function which is i'm having here log error this function that we are calling from here where basically we are passing all these details whatever we are getting from that lightning web component and uh, creating a record it's just a normal dml what i'm doing here within a try and catch block so in case if any error occurred in this error login framework we need to track it somewhere right so I'm just having system.debug here. And this is an invocable method that I have created for flow uh, because as I told you earlier, this class will be used for flow and batch class as well. And this is a wrapper that I have created. This still needs some modification. So better would be to focus on this part right now for this for the sake of this demo. 
the further things in this apex we will be using it in the upcoming video which is going to be related to flow apex and batch classes as well so this was my error login server okay now you must be thinking in lightning web component we can simply create a, a child component uh, we can call this uh, method from the child component and then we'll be able to reuse that component which is true uh, but as per salesforce best practices to make it reusable instead of calling these things again and again instead of calling the same methods uh, again and again we should be creating a service class for it so lightning web component as well i have created a handler here if you will see error handler which is basically having my apex method here which is calling the apex class and uh, providing the required values there so this method is going to help you let's say in case if you want to change anything you don't have to do the change in multiple components in your org there might be requirement of having multiple error login components as well let's assume a situation maybe you need to have a component which may display a single line and then there's another component which may display a multi-line error login framework or maybe there may be some kind of model pop-up it, it could be anything right so that's why we have created a handler class here which is basically a service class for my lightning web component which is just calling the apex class here as you can see my apex class error logging service and it is calling log client error which is the aura enabled method and we are just passing the values from here to the apex to trace it okay now i will quickly move to the error display component so this is my error display component as i told you already this is the same component that we are having in uh, salesforce e-bike application i have just modified a little uh, to make it appropriate for this demo so here in this component if you will see i'm just having error message here then a full stop and uh, if a stack trace is having any value i'm having the show detail link here it will only be visible if the stack trace is having any value in case if you're not having any stack trace you won't be able to see the show details and on click of this i'm making this view details uh, variable true which is happening on handle show detail click and once this variable is true it will be able to show you the stack trace of it i'll quickly show you the javascript so as this is a child component we are passing all the data here uh, in the terms of apis okay a default value of it is false uh, view details is also false and on the click of that button we are just making the view detail true okay now let me show you the example component so this is the example component a pretty basic component which is just having a button and this is my child component so that's how it is going to look in your lightning web components once this component is ready you just need to copy and paste it uh, wherever you want to display the error message in your component okay now what this button is doing so this is the button basically i'm having try catch block here and in try block i'm just throwing a error here uh, again a fake error i'm just generating an error here and uh, if the error occurs i'm calling the handle error from the error handling service class where i'm passing the component name which is example error i'm passing the error name which is simulate error uh, priority and i'm passing the stack detail as well uh, like you can see error message error stack and we are doing error visible equals to true which is again coming back to the child component which is here so it is going to make it is going to uh, send values to all these uh, parameters and uh, accordingly these parameters are going to show values on the ui itself so that's how the how the error handling component or error handling framework is going to work for lightning web component and uh, the overall output is going to look like this you can always customize the overall output or maybe if you want to customize the design of it maybe you need a strip on the top or uh, i think a strip on the top with a logo would be better yeah so we'll do one thing uh, in further videos when i'm going to show you the same use for the fx i'm going to show you another demo of a lightning web component which will be having a better displaying error message otherwise uh, 
this is going to be the overall functionality in backend. It is still going to be the same. So yeah, that it is for the day, guys. I'll be having the complete code on my blog, which is salesforcepole.com, and I'll also be uploading it uh, on my GitHub repo. You will be able to find the details in the description of this video. So if you like today's video, guys, a subscribe to the channel will be awesome. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Thanks for watching.